But I prefer a man who lives and gives expensive jewels. These were the blonde it girls of the golden era of film. Welcome to Slightly Dangerous. And today we're counting down our picks for the most popular blonde actresses to grace the silver screen. For this list, we've looked at actresses that were especially successful and influential throughout the decades of the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Number 10, Kim Novak. This blonde superstar is perhaps most well known for her role as Madeline Elster slash Judy Barton in Alfred Hitchcock's thriller, Vertigo. Columbia was hopeful she would bring them the same box office success Marilyn Monroe brought 20th Century Fox. And from the mid-1950s, she would do exactly that. winning multiple acting awards, including two Golden Globes and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Novak achieved box office success and starred opposite the era's favorite leading men, including Frank Sinatra, Kirk Douglas, Tyrone Power, William Holden, and Fred McMurray. Maybe you've got the motor flooded. What do I do about it? She would state, Going to Hollywood as a young girl and suddenly finding they want to make you over totally, it's such a total change and it was like I was always fighting to show some of myself. What do you want? In her mid-30s, Novak withdrew from acting and has worked irregularly in film since then. She is one of the few stars from the golden era of Hollywood who is still alive. Did you know that I fell in love with your hands before I fell in love with you? and her absence from the public eye has increased the allure of her legend. Number 9, Mae West. Mae was very controversial in her heyday and encountered numerous problems with censorship. Yo, my whole world, what do you want to do, drive me to a madhouse? No, oh, I'll call you a taxi. Her characterization of a carefree, sexually secure, and liberated woman was amusing, as well as groundbreaking. I'm sorry you think more of your diamonds than you do of your soul. I'm sorry you think more of my soul than you do of my diamonds. Quite the comedian, West wrote some of the cleverest lines displayed on film. Her first starring role on Broadway was in a 1926 play titled Sex, which she wrote, produced, and directed. Conservative critics panned the show, but audiences loved her brash and unapologetic attitude. I don't know. I talked it over with myself last night and we both went to sleep. However, this wouldn't be the first or the last time she would cause controversy because of her sexually forward material. Now, uh, take care of these men. Yes, give them all my address. Number 8, Betty Grable. Popular World War II pinup dancer and actress, Betty was a triple threat. I'm very grateful, but I can't accept. Now, please go. Get out! She had trained in ballet and danced since the age of three and was only 13 when she booked her first jobs in Hollywood. In an effort to mask her youth, Grable dyed her brown hair a striking platinum blonde. It was a signature look the entertainer would maintain throughout her entire career. Betty soon became known for her grand Technicolor musicals, many of which followed the generic boy meets girl storyline. Her movies provided a happy escape from the harsh reality of life and were hugely popular among audiences. It was during her reign that Grable posed for her famous bathing suit pinup photo, taken by photographer Frank Pawoni in 1943. Her poster made her the number one pinup girl of World War II and was later included in Life magazine's 100 photographs that changed the world. Grable's legs were famously insured by 20th Century Fox for one million. Describing her film career, Grable said, I became a star for two reasons and I'm standing on them. Miss Jones, you're wonderful. You're terrific. You're... Number 7. Veronica Lake This actress found fame in the 1940s starring as a femme fatale in film noir such as The Blue Dahlia and The Glass Key. I'll tell everybody who you are, like a kid's sister. You follow me. She starred in a handful of features that earned legendary status, including the amusing comedies Sullivan's Travels and I Married a Witch. I could tell them about a few regulations you've broken, Mr. Young. At age 19, she played the part of a nightclub singer in a military drama titled I Wanted Wings. The role would make Lake a star and introduce her signature hairstyle. During a take, Lake's hair fell over her right eye, creating a peekaboo effect. 
This hairstyle boosted her popularity and was widely copied by women. I'll tell you what. I'll pick a number from 1 to 10 and whoever guesses it gets to take me home. Now start counting. She was so popular in the 1940s that at the height of her fame she was making 4500 a week, which would be about $65,000 today. Number 6, Ginger Rogers. One of the greatest dancers to grace the screen. It was famously stated that Ginger Rogers did everything that Fred Astaire did, just backwards and in heels. In 1925, she won a dance contest that launched an impressive vaudeville career. Rogers would go on to gain recognition on Broadway and when I return, I shall tell you how the other half lives. Success in her debut stage role led to her first studio contract. Throughout the 1930s, Rogers made nine films with Astaire, yet she was an accomplished actress outside of their partnership. A fellow I'm with. He doesn't know about me. Demonstrating superior acting skills in drama and comedies she appeared in, Rogers won the Academy Award for Best Actress in 1941 for her role in Kitty Foyle. After an impressive career in films, Rogers remained prominent with performances on Broadway and in nightclubs, as well as television appearances. Oh, I can't. Oh, Miss Cooper. Don't think of me as anyone, just think of me as your doctor. Number 5, Doris Day. This successful singer and actress began her career as a big band singer in 1939, singing with the Les Brown Band, among others. As a kid, Doris listened to Ella Fitzgerald and was inspired to pursue a singing career. Had enough, love's one thing you can keep. She recorded more than 650 songs from 1947 to 1967, garnering her status as a legendary singer. Fighters and sailors and bow-legged tailors can pay for their tickets and rent me. As an actress, she was one of the biggest female stars of the 1960s. Her most successful films were the romantic comedies she made co-starring Rock Hudson. She would garner a hit movie and song with 1956's The Man Who Knew Too Much with the film winning an Academy Award for Best Original Song for Que Sera Sera, Whatever Will Be, Will Be. Doris was America's sweetheart of golden era Hollywood. Number 4. Jean Harlow One of the most glamorous women to appear on screen, Harlow was a leading lady for MGM and starred in a string of hit films throughout the 1930s. She created the blueprint for the many blonde starlets who would follow behind her in the subsequent decades. That's life for you. The Cook's relatives have babies and I have sauerkraut juice. Her persona on film was that of a playful but seductive temptress. Harlow demonstrated comedic chops in many of her films, including Dinner at Eight, Live Old Lady, and Red Dust. Her hair played a major role in her career and her hairdresser revealed she used peroxide, ammonia, Clorox, and Lux Flakes on a weekly basis to achieve her famous hair color. I like Gorgonzola. She was the first major actress to be described as a blonde bombshell and was nicknamed the Platinum Blonde. The world wouldn't get to see her evolve on screen as she passed away at the untimely age of 26. Number 3, Grace Kelly. An icon if ever there was one. Grace Kelly brought style and elegance to the silver screen during her brief stint in Hollywood. She got her start in theatre and television, acting in an estimated 100 TV plays. Appearing in 11 major films in the span of six years, she was often a muse for Alfred Hitchcock. Kelly is most remembered for starring in Dial M for Murder, Rear Window, and To Catch a Thief. Give up, John. Admit who you are. A talented actress with a large range in ability, her performance in The Country Girl won her an Academy Award for Best Actress in 1954. Hello? Hello? Kelly became the second major actress to become European royalty after marrying Prince Rainier of Monaco. She would retire from acting at the age of 26 and began her duties as Princess of Monaco. And if Lana Turner doesn't set your brain a whirl, then you don't love a lovely girl. Number 2, Lana Turner. One of the most popular actresses throughout the 40s and 50s, her films earned MGM more than 50 million during her 18-year contract. 
Lana was a glamour icon and tabloid goddess. She helped cement the image of the blonde bombshell in pop culture, and her sex symbol status was a precursor to Marilyn Monroe. Turner embraced her glamorous persona, making sure to always be camera ready, and never left the house without being in full hair and makeup. She mainly was cast in roles to showcase her fashion and beauty. It wouldn't be till later in her career that she would appear in serious dramatic roles, in The Bad and the Beautiful, and Imitation of Life. Turner was often photographed at nightclubs and with the most famous men of the era. Her partygoer reputation, along with her dating life, including seven marriages, was used as tabloid fodder. Of course I don't. Of course I don't want you to take me home. And she was one of the first major actresses whose controversial personal life helped instead of harmed her movie career. Number 1. Marilyn Monroe Born Norma Jean Mortensen, Monroe would become the world's most recognizable actress and her hair played a major role in her success. However, it wasn't until 1947 that she would switch to her signature blonde locks after receiving her first film contract. Success would hit in 1953 with leading roles in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, How to Marry a Millionaire, and Niagara. These films would establish her on-screen persona as a dumb blonde. <laughs> Come on now, relax. You're just making this all up. An aspect that contributed to her stardom was the fact that her characters were seemingly clueless to their sex appeal, unlike the screen sirens of the 30s or the femme fatales of the 40s. Terribly sorry to bother you, but I forgot the key to my front door, so I had to ring your bell. I feel so silly. Monroe still captivates audiences decades after her passing due to her paradoxal public image. Although, she remains a sex symbol and a beauty icon. She's also remembered for her distraught personal life, struggle for professional respect, and her mysterious death. Do you agree with our list? Which blonde actresses from the golden era of Hollywood are your favorite? Cigarettes. For more classic movie top 10s published every Friday, be sure to subscribe to Slightly Dangerous. Hi! Hi!